Keir Simmons is in London to start us off. Keir, you're at Buckingham Palace on a mournful day. What are you seeing there tonight? Well, Lester, it's hard to comprehend, isn't it, that just a few months ago we were watching the Queen on that historic Buckingham Palace balcony celebrating 70 years on the throne. Tonight, close to midnight, there are crowds outside Buckingham Palace to pay their respects to this historic, towering figure. This is the last moment the world saw Queen Elizabeth. Just two days ago, the Queen pictured looking frail, but sprightly, meeting the new British Prime Minister always doing her duty even days before her death. The palace first announced this morning doctors were concerned about her health. Then around 6.30 local time, posting a statement on the gates, reading, the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. Prime Minister Liz Truss, who had appeared in that last photo with the Queen, saying she was her inspiration. She was the very spirit of Great Britain, and that spirit will endure. Tonight, the Queen's son, Charles, now becoming King Charles III, though his coronation will not likely be for months. In a statement calling his mother's death, a moment of the greatest sadness for me and all members of my family. The royal family pictured racing to be by her side. Grandson, Prince William, driving. Her sons, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward, in passenger seats. Already with her at Balmoral, Prince Charles, with Camilla and the Queen's only daughter, Princess Anne. Prince Harry travelling alone to see his ailing grandmother, arriving after her death was announced, leaving Meghan behind in London, the Duchess of Cambridge staying with the children. Throughout the UK, flags are at half-staff, crowds gathering in front of the palace to remember Great Britain's longest-serving monarch, a historic 70 years on the throne. Born in 1926, the third grandchild of King George V, Elizabeth would guide the nation and its monarchy through historic challenges. During the Blitz, the royal family stayed in London despite the nightly bombing raids from Nazi Germany. To the people of Britain, there was this message from their future queen. We know, every one of us, that in the end all will be well. For God will care for us and give us victory and peace. That speech sealed a special relationship with her future subjects. <laughs> Westminster Abbey, 1953. The first time TV cameras were allowed inside to record a coronation. The celebration was seen worldwide. And Elizabeth's reign would be felt worldwide. She was the most widely traveled monarch in history. She helped transform Britain's empire easing former colonies into states, and all that while balancing motherhood and monarchy. Three sons and a daughter. She encouraged her children to live lives beyond the palace walls. In some ways, the royal family appeared just like the rest of us, vulnerable. There was divorce and reconciliation. Her son, Prince Andrew, mired in accusations of sexual misconduct. But the tragedy of Princess Diana was an especially dark moment for the royal family. Her fairy tale romance and marriage ended in scandal with a messy divorce and then death. Diana killed in a traffic accident in Paris. The royal family grieved privately, but there was growing anger in Britain that the monarchy was out of touch, detached and aloof. The Queen quickly returned to London from her vacation home to pay tribute to Diana and face a challenge to modernise the monarchy. I, for one, believe there are lessons to be drawn from her life and from the extraordinary and moving reaction to her death. She embraced many changes, including the marriage of her grandson, Prince William, to commoner Kate Middleton. And Prince Harry to the American actress, Meghan Markle. In 2021, her beloved husband of seven decades, Prince Philip, died. In her words, he was her strength and stay. Her platinum jubilee celebrated with a military parade. Beacons lit across the world. I keep mine in here. A surprise appearance from Paddington Bear. And over 10 million people across Britain gathering for street parties to honour their one and only Queen. The Jubilee concluded with a final wave from Queen Elizabeth from the balcony of Buckingham Palace 
she was joined by three future kings, Prince Charles, Prince William and Prince George. The crowds cheering for Queen Elizabeth II, a monarch for the ages. And Keir, I understand we are going to hear directly for the first time from King Charles III tomorrow. That's right, Lester. This is that historic moment when you hear the words, the Queen is dead, long live the King. And for King Charles, a moment of great sadness and huge responsibility. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.